I thought I'd just get your classrooms because I know a lot of you don't know a lot about boxing, so we have a lesson today. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> Obviously, I'd like to welcome everyone to a um, press conference for what I think is a really exciting fight and I believe a really exciting undercard. Probably um, one of the best cards I've put together for a, a long time. Um, all nice, evenly matched fights. There are six titles on the bill, uh, ranging from British, Commonwealth, British to English titles and uh, an eliminator. So to me, I think it's a good card and there's a few younger fighters on the card that are being built. I'm a promoter that believes that you build fighters to fight for titles and win titles. You just don't build fighters to put them in titles and get them beat. And I think that's what's happening a lot in boxing today. We've got some promoters in boxing who've got no idea about boxing. They're just getting their fights and sticking them in world title fights for the sake of it so they can see their pictures in newspapers and their fighters have got no chance. You know, I'm from the old school and I've been taught that if a fighter fights for a title, he should be able to go in there and actually come out and win, win a title or earn the right to fight for it, not just be put in there for the sake of it. You know, what boxing is missing? People say we're missing stars, but there's no one in this business who can build stars anymore. What boxing actually needs is another Mickey Duff who was probably one of the greatest promoters of all these times. I like to think I've modelled myself on him and not like a few of the guys out there who think they, if they were chocolate, they'd all eat themselves, but never mind. But, you know, this is um, a different business. I believe this man sitting here is being built the right way. I believe that he will go forward and when he fights for the title, will win the fight. You will not see him being put in with Klitschko until he is actually 100% ready and his trainer's 100% confident we can win that title. We're not going for a payday. And I know Sam's going to say we're not going to get there because he's going to put a stop to that. So, um, you know, if he does, he does. But we're confident he won't. So, so you know, you've got, we've got the ingredients here of a, a really great night's fight and a great night's boxing. David, will be in, David and Sam will be in the ring at 11 o'clock, straight after the, um, is it the European Championship Club final at night? It is, isn't it? Yeah, so straight after that, this, these guys will go in the ring. Um, the show, the doors will open about 5.30 and the boxing will start at 5.45. And as I say, um, the main fight will go in the ring at 11 o'clock. So all I'm going to do now is, um, tickets are selling very well. I haven't sold 4,000 in, in, in two hours. Um, you know, that's... I'm not as good as some promoters at selling tickets, but I know we will have three and a half thousand, maybe four thousand there, and it and it will be, you know, and we're set out for three six, and as I say, it is selling very well. And <coughs> considering we haven't really launched the main media and advertising campaign, which is the start of this, I'm very pleased with what tickets we sold. I think we've done about eighteen hundred so far, so so I'm confident that by May the nineteenth we will have a sellout. And the way these two guys are working, you know, doing press conferences, um, going to football matches, it all helps. So I thank these two guys for making it very and the rest of the undercard. And with that, I'll just throw the floor open. We're having a lot of questions here today. Go on, Jim. I'm just going to bring something, you know, something different that, you know, David's not seen, seen before. You know, well, he's probably seen it before, but obviously not from me. Um, you know, I've, I've got my ways that I know I can, I can beat David. Um, and you're just, you're just going to, you're just going to see him on the night. I can't really give too much away, you know, because the man's sitting next to me now. <laughs> so, um, um, you're just going to see something, you're going to see something different. You're going to see something different from me as well, from what you've seen before. Um, well, we've got we've got some good sparring lined up. I leave that to Graham. Um, yeah, you know, I, I enjoy sparring like taller men. For me, that's you know it's, a, it's an easier easier spar because when you spar with someone smaller, they're always trying to work, they're always trying to get in, and you know it's a, it's a faster pace. So I think for me, you know, I set the pace. You know, so so I, I'm just feeling good about this. You know, I'm not going to tell you who I'm sparring with. Just yet. Hey, 
experience. I thought you could soak up to this in the same way you could have the Tyson Fury just because it's a change. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, but the Tyson Fury was in the past. Um, Sam Sexton's a, a massive threat to, to my career and obviously my livelihood and my, my kids' future type of thing. So that's all the motivation I need. And obviously to become the first British heavyweight champion from from Liverpool is another. There's there's that many different things motivating motivating for for the fight. You know, we're, we're eight weeks out from the fight, and I've I've already found another level in myself which I didn't know I had in in my determination and training. So definitely, motivation is not an issue. In your mind, how long do you think it is to think about this? Well, obviously, not until after this fight for for the start, and then you know, just take each fight as it comes. First, I've got to got to get past Sam who again is going to be a, a tough fight and it's going to be an exciting fight because we both want it so bad. Um, you know, and I, I don't think it's going to be a matter of who wants it most on the night, it's going to be a matter of who, who's, who's the smarter fighter on the night and who's prepared properly on the night and I think we're both going to prepare very well. Um, you know, it, it, it's just each fight as it comes but I know I've said, I've said 18 months to two years but you just don't know what, what's around the corner. Do you think Sam's your biggest domestic threat left? Um, who asked me that? Johnny Nelson. Right, Johnny. Right, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't actually. I think, I think there's there's other big fights out there at, at domestic level for, for all the heavyweights to fight each other. Obviously, if Fury reappears somewhere down the line and Matt Skelton looked apart against Tom Zalas, he turned back the clock a little bit. We've got Towers. You think they're a bigger threat than Sam? You are? You think they're a bigger threat than Sam? Oh no, no, not without a doubt. Sam, Sam's the best, the best out there. I think for the for the phone for me, but I think further down the line, for for each each every way to come across each other in the UK, there's big fights out there. I think. David, is it right you offered a fight in America as well before having the fight in Australia? Yeah, we we were offered a fight in Atlantic City. I think it was going to be this twenty fourth of March. Yeah, twenty uh, fourth of March. But you know, the the priority for us is to get get. The house and all that over here in the UK, and you know, do what we need to do domestically. And I think that the Americans, if you can wait for the for the risk of the truck in, in taking a fight seven weeks or eight weeks before fighting Sam Sexton, it wasn't worth it. You know, was it with the truck? Might have been a cut. You know, and injury, anything really. So this this fight is too important to be taken like a, an eight rounder in America. See, this also shows you the value that these two guys put on the heavyweight. Um, and winning the Lonsdale belt, which I think is important. As I say, a lot of fighters are trying to jump the Lonsdale belt, not learn their career properly, and get themselves slung into bigger and more major fights without without actually learning their trade. Yeah, definitely. I think what he just said there is right because you know, how can you call yourself a European champion or even a world cha or a world champion when you haven't even con conquered the British uh, the British yet? Mm. You know, I think you should do it that route. I think you should do the British, European, world level do it that way. Mm. Too many bold. fighters these days are trying to skip opponents because they're people they don't want to fight. Um, but basically, because they don't want to fight them, they're, they're, they're skipping belts and stuff. Mm. Now, have you made adjustments in your training after losing to Chisora? Have you been doing so well early against Lokan times and then played a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really like to say I've made adjustments because, you know, the time is just a very difficult time in my life, you know. And, you know, I, I just put it down to that. At the time, just before then, before everything was happening, you know, I was, I was on a roll, if you like, you know, I just, I just won the, you know, the prize fight the Southern area, the Commonwealth twice, you know, and I was, I was on the up. It was a massive setback for me, so it's just about um, getting my head right again, which it is now. You know, I've got a clear run again. I'm happy again. Um, I'm enjoying the gym. I'm enjoying training again. So that's just all that matters to me now. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, to, for someone to say, you know, she's always just given Vitaly Klitschko his best fight since Lennox Lewis. You mean, and the new person I've ever lost to is Derek Chisora. You know, there's a beast for me. If I ever fought someone and I lost, and I thought there's no way I could beat that person if I fought him again, then I'd probably give up boxing. But I always believe I can beat people, so that's why I carry on. Any more questions? Um, 
my opinion is that they needed to set an example, you know, so any any other boxers wanted to carry on like that then they'd have to think twice. But uh, I, I still think there's probably a way back in for them somewhere down the line. So you know, I, I, I do believe they did have to set an example though. Yeah, I think um, you know I don't really get too too involved in, in in the politics side of things, that side of things. But you know, to take someone's livelihood away is um, maybe a little bit strong, in my own opinion. I mean, boxing is a is a man's fighting game, and that is what that is exactly what it is. It is what it is. We we fight, and that is you know. So sometimes if things get a little bit heated, then you've sometimes got to overlook that. You know. I think they just made him more famous than he is. I mean, I bet his promoter can't wait to get his license back and get him in the ring. You know, he's become a he's become a a major commodity in boxing. Ball dealt with it the way they thought they should have dealt with it. You know, they haven't take they've taken his license off him, but they haven't said he's banned, have they? I mean, he can apply for his license tomorrow. You know, and I agree with what the two guys have said. You can't say, you can't stop a man from earning a living. You know, a suspension, and he got fined a hundred thousand, didn't he? By the was it by the W or the German Federation? I'm not sure. So he was, you know, he was fined. But if they're going to do that for one fight. They got to do it for every fighter who, who causes a disruption at a press conference. Or that's why I've told these two to behave themselves. <laughs> Yeah, really well. I mean, I, I was surprised uh, how well known I was over there in, in the boxing venue. I, you know, not walking down the streets or not, but in, in the boxing venue, a lot of people knew who I was within the boxing community, and it was nice. Yeah, it was it was a nice experience for me over there, and um, you know, it whetted my appetite for something that big in the future. If there's no more questions, we. Go and do a photograph and then we'll come out and do one-to-ones.